Good to be back with you all today. I'm Lee Bogle with the Safety Division. In the past week or so, you may have seen the video indicating potential hazards associated with equipment winter maintenance and the task being performed in preparation for winter activities. Most recently, as these activities have begun, there was an unfortunate incident during dump truck tailgate removal that resulted in a serious injury of an employee. First and most important, our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to that employee and his family. Now we all want to ensure that this never happens to anyone else. As you already know, a stand down for tailgate removal was issued due to the incident. During this time, the development of procedures for removing dump truck tailgates has been developed. If you haven't already, you will soon receive a copy of the memo and the approved procedures. This will also include demonstration videos to share and discuss with your teams. While these approved procedures are a few of the several ways to remove a tailgate, the ones included were developed based on information about standard practices and collaboration with representatives of operations, garages, the safety council, and safety managers across the state. At this time, the written procedures and videos included are the only approved methods allowed for tailgate removal. If you have a better way, another way, or want to share additional information, please reach out to your regional safety manager. As you will see in the memo packet, there are currently three written procedures allowed for tailgate removal. Procedure A, the dump bed remains lowered. Procedure B, the dump bed is raised to full height. Both procedures A and B require the use of a forklift, skid steer, backhoe, or wheel loader to support and manage removal of the tailgate equipped primarily with fork attachments. And last, procedure C. The dump bed is raised to full height and the tailgate is removed through use of the factory installed D-ring attachment. These were developed in no order of preference. However, please do not attempt to blend, mix, or modify any of the procedures at this time. Work with your supervisors to determine the preferred procedure for your area. As mentioned earlier, each procedure has been demonstrated on video and will be made available for viewing in district work units. Please take time to view these with a mindset to understand the process. Your fellow employees took time to make these videos for you. Are they perfect? No, but they certainly demonstrate the concept. If you have questions or need support on any part of this topic, reach out to your supervisors, regional safety, or any of us here at headquarters with engineering operations and safety. We will help you. Once the work unit has reviewed the procedures, watched the videos, and discussed them, they need to document who has completed it and then work may resume. Now, I want to take a moment to say a special thank you to people who made the videos to demonstrate each of the procedures. We could not have accomplished this without your help, and it really shows how much you all care by sharing this information with your TDOT family. In Region 1, Dwayne Manning, Eric Wolfenbarger, Steve Klein, Cody Dellinger, and Allison Smith Bryant, they worked on Procedure A. Region 2, Sam Penny, Robert Harville, Jeremy Price, Ricky McDonald, and Chris Smith for their valuable information and open discussion to prevent this in the future. In Region 3, Lance Rowland, Dwayne Umbles, Sean Kelly, Chris Bird, and Jared Benar for Procedure B. In Region 4, Danny Busby, James Fry, William Harden, and Adam Rogers for Procedure C video and Brian Patrick's input and information as well. Again, thank you all for the work that you do and the preparations to continue to provide Tennesseans with the service they deserve and have come to expect. Take care and as always remember your four.